Hey guys, I am making some books today using Bookwrite, which is a software from Blurb. Uh, Blurb is a self-publication website that has a wide variety of books that you can create. Photo books being sort of the standard of what most people will want. Uh, trade books being the thing that I make the most of because these are small and a lot cheaper to make. If you check the prices out here, it's $2.99 for 24 pages for a six by nine book. Um, and I've done a few of these at this point. They're really high quality and I find it's a lot easier to sell something that's cheaper than it is to sell something that's more expensive. So regular photo book prices uh, for like an eight by 10, which is the one that I've been making this year, it starts at 22 bucks, but that's only 20 pages. And if you make something that is like 50 pages big, um, it can be somewhere in the neighborhood of like 35 bucks for color. If you wanna make a profit on it, you have to price those books at like $50. And once you get that high, it's just really difficult to get people to uh, part with $50 cash over something that's like, I, I sell my trade books for $10, $15, and um, it's not that hard for somebody to do the mental calculations if they wanna part uh, ways with $15 cash than if they wanna part ways with $50 cash. Also, the trade books are very similar to zines, and when I do zine fest, these are things that can be on my table. Um, zine culture in general is something that I really like being part of. So uh, it kind of works out for me and the kind of photography that I do that I make something that's a six by nine, uh, $15 trade book over some sort of like $50, $60 coffee table uh, boutique item. That just doesn't seem to be the uh, crowd that buys my stuff and that's not really the kind of crowd I wanna to cater to anyways. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the six by nine trade book. I'm going to make it black and white because black and white is a lot cheaper. If we check out the prices here, we go to standard color and a soft cover. You see that it starts at $7.99, $14 additional pages. You switch to black and white, you're looking at $4.99 with three cents per additional page. So I'm gonna pick the standard black and white, white and coated and soft cover. We've got $4.99 for 24 pages. As far as book sizes, I find something in the neighborhood of uh, 36 to 50 pages is satisfying. I feel like 24 is kind of a little weak, um, especially when I'm gonna put my images in there, but I'm gonna have some horizontal images and I don't want those as double page spreads. Uh, this book is a little small for placing a photograph sideways on one side of the page. If I have to put a horizontal image, I'd rather it just take up the whole amount of real estate between two pages. Uh, this is gonna be one of my noir books, so I'm gonna title it Noir One. Noir is sort of a catch-all term that I have for the photography that I have that's a little bit retro, that uh, sort of references the work of the artists from the 1930s, 40s, 50s, uh, people like Man Ray, uh, up to and including Richard Avedon. Now, I'm talking about my photographs, not the photographs of those artists, but they're guys that have really highly influenced me. I find that a lot of the models and makeup artists I tend to work with uh, have a little bit of a retro aesthetic to them. They look like they could be starlets from another era. And uh, I'm also highly influenced by just sort of that noir surreal vibe that you get from people like uh, Orson Welles, retro horror stuff, the surrealists from the 1930s. Here's my basic page layout. Each page is just a single photo. When you switch to the layouts tab in Bookwrite, uh, you have a few options. Some of them are not usable really for something this small. Uh, something like this with four images would be fine. If they are four very similar images, like a sequence of events, I'll go ahead and use this. But most of the time when I make my books, 
I just use the simplest layout possible that gives the images the most space to sing. And that's gonna be full page verticals or the double page spread, which is this option here. So let's go ahead and import some photos. For this project, I chose almost 200 images that I call Noir Girls. Um, and I'm gonna whittle it down to something in the neighborhood of 30 in the end. Now, select all of these. And as you can see from my thumbnails, I have ones that are sort of straight uh, pinup beauty. I have ones that are a little more graphic designy. I have ones that fit more of the retro horror aesthetic, science fiction. And I have ones that are very abstract, that have a lot of blurs to them. And I have ones that are a little more fashion-y, uh, that are minimalist in the way that this one is. Lots of choices. And you could simply hit auto-create, have Bookwrite populate all of your pages, use all of your photos, and call it good. But I don't think that's satisfying from an art book perspective. An art book, much like a gallery show, should have some kind of consistent theme that runs across all the images and it shouldn't just be a uh, greatest hits package, nor should it be something randomly selected by a program. It has to have thought and intent to it because your book is the art piece. It isn't the individual pieces of art that go into it. If if that was the way it was, then I might as well just stick these images on Instagram. But uh, my personal publications, these trade books are intended to summarize a concept, a vibe, a feeling, if you will. And I have enough images that I can make multiple editions of this noir project. So for the very first one, uh, I'm gonna go straight for it. Noir means black in French, and it's meant to evoke something sinister and shadowy. So I am gonna pick those images for anything else. For the cover, I'm gonna pick one that I already know is kind of like a, uh, a hit on social media and got published in Black and White Magazine. I think this is also um, the kind of cover that is, I don't wanna say generic enough, but it does feature a silhouette. So it isn't built entirely around a single model, a single face. Uh, it has the retro hairstyle. It has the surreal effect to the side of it. And since it's already been published um, and I've already sold this image, before on my Etsy shop and on Instagram, I know that it's an image that has some appeal with people who aren't uh, in my family or the model or the makeup artist. I know that there's people out there that'll see this and respond to it. So I'm gonna use that as my cover. And certainly you can do typefaces and stuff in Photoshop on the original image and then import that. But there are uh, text tools within Bookwrite they're right here. So I am going to go ahead and draw my text box. If you're worried if you're centered or not, you can use this little directional finder and position things so you know it's centered uh, within the space. This purple area here is the no fly zone and the red line in the middle of it is the trim area. That means that the book will be cut by blurb along this line and uh, this purple area, you're not supposed to have any text but into it. So if you're looking at this and you're saying that doesn't look very centered, it's almost up to the purple line. It is centered, it's just that you're advised not to put anything over there. I know I've received some uh, materials back from Blurb and they've been trimmed a little bit differently. If I had text in the purple area on one of those other editioned trade books, it probably would have been cut in that area and that would not have been a good thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click it to add text. You can type away, You'll see how small it is, the font it is. Uh, I hit Command A on my MacBook 
and it highlights everything. At this point, I am going to alter the font size to something that's going to be legible. Something like 35 might suit my purposes. Because the cover is black and has a lot of gray tone area, I'm going to go ahead and change it to white font. And at this point, I'm going to find a font that's here or one that I've imported, which will show up down here. And out of these, uh, one of them is going to be the most suitable thing for my book. Every book cover has a font in its soul that is uh, thematically suitable to it. This is a noir book. It should have something that's mid 20th century. It definitely deserves more than plain old Arial font that we have here. The fonts that you import are not going to be good for when it's time for Blurb to generate an ebook. In that case, I would recommend uh, doing this cover generation, cover design in Adobe Photoshop. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and use one of the more old timey fonts that Blurb comes with. Abril Fatface is very ideal for what I'm working with this material. <clears throat> Abril fat face is very ideal for this particular kind of material. And I think if I make it a little bit larger and instead of saying number one, like a comic, I go volume one, space it. So the name and the volume are equal sizes. See how that's looking there. When you have this warning, these warnings are not to be ignored. Uh, I would address every warning as if it was life or death. So by touching the purple, it gives me the warning, backing it off, it's okay. Now, one thing I'm not so happy about with this design as it is, is the volume one popping off from Noir. Uh, two ways to solve this. One is to just reduce the font size again till it's equal, something like that, 27 points. Also, I don't have to have my text aligned all the way to the left. I can use center alignment and that's gonna solve that problem there. I intend to make more than one volume of this particular trade book. So having something that I can use as a consistent trade dress, uh, a font that comes with book right and a particular alignment and font sizes that I can remember, uh, that's going to work out in my favor. And in an ideal world, my second volume would have same font, same size, same location. Uh, maybe it utilizes one of these other pictures that has more white space and is black. So this edition, though, is going to be the very shadowy, very dark issue. Uh, because it is all my work, I'll also make sure to notate who it's by. If I was famous, Having my name in giant letters on the cover would mean something because I'm not famous and I'm selling more of the vibe and the artwork than uh, here's more images by David Miller. I'm gonna I'm okay <clears throat> I'm okay with it being small and in the lower corner. Not a bad cover design, if I do say so myself. One thing I might change is keep it one long line. And I like that it starts on the black area of the model and runs up to the edge of the book. Now, most artwork, uh, the <clears throat> one good design tip for the majority of artwork in the world is giving the viewer a reason to look all over your piece, whether it's graphic design, a photograph, a painting, so on and so forth. Uh, unless it's sort of an all over pattern, like an Afghan rug, I would encourage you to think about how you want someone to spend time on your piece 
and look around. If I spread text here, here, I have the eye line going here. There's something of interest throughout the piece. Um, and the fact that this particular image has a flow to her hair, a flow to her back, which leads to this photographs by David Miller section. Uh, that is a great way to have your viewer's brain engaged. That is very important, no matter what kind of artwork you're making. You don't want people to look at it for a second and get all they could possibly get out of it. That's why we discourage a lot of center placement of text, center placement of all the important parts, having people looking directly at the camera, so on and so forth. You want your viewers to be engaged and one way is by judiciously placing your elements throughout your piece, keeping focus of where things are flowing, keeping focus of where eye lines are, where directional lines are headed. She's looking this way. There's a line that leads up to noir. Her back leads to this text down here. Now that I've created my cover and I know the theme, I'm about ready to move on to my pages. I'll come back to the back cover. Uh, on a trade book, you have so much real estate to work with, and I'll add a few more pages in this, but when you get to the last page, uh, it's advised that you don't have any material here at all, be it text or photograph. I'll show you what happens when you put something on the last page. You get a warning. For trade books, Blurb advises you not to place content on the last page of your book. Otherwise, during the printing process, four to six additional blank pages will be added to your book. So I'm not going to do that. Normally in a photographic book, uh, I either put information about myself on the last page or the first page, but because I don't want to have the additional pages added from Blurb on the covers, the back cover, that's where I will put my social media links my website, any other additional information about me, uh, because really the back cover doesn't serve any other purpose besides telling you more about myself. Getting to the pages. The default page count is 24. I'm going to click Manage Pages, and I'm going to hit the plus icon here. Uh, it doesn't matter at this stage whether I add it at the beginning or the end of the book because I don't have anything placed on any of these pages but I am going to add 12 pages. That's not an option here, it's 10. I'll hit that, then I'll do plus again and add two for a page count that, and after I've added 10 pages, I'll add two more to get to 36. Uh, I find this is a good size for the kind of trade books that I like to make, and it also means that I'll get a product that I can sell for something in the neighborhood of 15 to $20 uh, without any issues, back to book. I'm gonna populate my pages one at a time. Before I do so, I need a little strategy for what I might want as double page spreads. Anything that's horizontal, uh, as I said before, I want that to be laid out across two pages. And I'll go ahead and show you the difference between placing a horizontal on one page where I have a lot of white space above, a lot of white space below, and the same image as a double page spread. This is just a lot more impressive to look at. Uh, I think this image in particular is really good for a double page spread too, because this figure back here is the shadow cast by the model on this page. So there's something that crosses over all the way. An image that probably would not work so well as a double page spread would be something that has a uh, feature in the center. So going to my photos, if I grab this image, even though it's spreading the model out, she's here and we have an object over here, you have to realize this center of the double page spread is the part of the book that is creased. So. Her hair and her forehead are going to be in the middle of the book. They're not going to be visible. It's possible that 
Nobody else would notice this flaw, but I know when I look at something like that where a person's face is split across the crease of a book, it looks really bad to me. And I don't think that this image, as much as I like it and as I think it's suitable for the aesthetic of the book, I just don't feel like uh, it can afford a double page spread. So this would be one I would avoid using. I might even trash can it out of my choices. I'm gonna keep it in here for now. This is another one that's similar, where the model's face is just going to be printed in the middle of everything and it's not gonna work out. That said, you can reposition your layouts like so, if your image is large enough. So in this case, uh, these dots, which are actually on the 35 millimeter film that I shot this image on, they eat up quite a bit of real estate and I could end up with something aesthetically pleasing. Now the model's face does not fall into this inner crease. Ultimately though, I'm gonna leave that one to the side. You often find when you make these books that you have similar images and one suits the purpose and the design of the book better than the one that wasn't going to work out. I'll go ahead and place this one here. And because my book is going to have full bleed pages, which means that the image is spread all the way across them, uh, go ahead and stretch that out. The image on its facing page needs to have something that links it thematically. I have another one of these kind of weird 35 millimeter film pieces that has this uh, snowy texture inherent on it. That can work. They were shot at the same time on the same day, just with different models. Uh, another thing that I could use is one of the ones that utilizes some funky LED lighting, which I have a few of here. As you scroll across your thumbnails, uh, depending on the kind of photography you do, I think you're going to find a lot of commonalities. For example, this lady has wet hair and a rugged texture behind her, and she's wearing what is actually a dancer's leotard, but it does have sort of a uh, lingerie texture to it. This lady is wearing a slip, and she has kind of a wild look to her. Those two images, uh, they also have very similar framing with the arm up and the brightened eyes. If I was to pick a new page, place one next to the other. I think the similarities are very apparent and these images help support each other. They're different enough that the viewer would get something out of each image individually, but the framing of head to uh, rib cage is the same. The look is somewhat similar. This background is something I actually projected there, but they're, they're just very wild people. So I like seeing those side by side. As much as I like seeing these two side by side, uh, I think that the placement of where this model is and her elbow pointing uh, doesn't quite support the one that's over here. This one's just so bright and this one's so dark in contrast. I'd like to see something with one of these that has a similar magic aesthetic. I think these two support each other a little bit better. Something that's happening on this page where she's tossing what in reality were LED lights uh, feels like it flows into this page with her elbow pointing at the model over here. Now, certainly in your own book design, you probably will find a scenario like this where you have images that are in a sequence. These all involve the model shaking your head to a slow shutter speed. And uh, they gave pretty trippy effect. They're a sequence. So if I liked these images enough to have more than one, it certainly would make sense to have them sit next to each other on facing pages. Nothing wrong with that. It's a strategy for book design. Uh, something that is a sequence like this though, where things are so similar, 
This is where I go into layouts and I select the layouts that have multiple images because I think that um, as few pages as I have in my book, I wanna make sure that the reader is going to get their money's worth and I don't wanna eat up a whole bunch of real estate with a sequence. If we were making a comic book, uh, it would be the same thing where a character was doing a sequence of events like planting a bomb and sneaking around a building. Uh, it just would not make sense to spend a whole bunch of pages to show each little detail when you could easily have smaller panels and get the same effect. So I'm gonna put a few of these here. In fact, because I only have three that look really similar and then two that look quite different, I'm gonna see if there is a layout that has three images to it. We have three horizontals. We have some duos. Not finding one that has three verticals. I do see this page and think it might be more suitable because it takes away the gutters in between the images. Even though my photos started off as verticals, there's no reason they need to stay that way for the purposes of this book. What if we did something a little more clever? Uh, this reminds me of a children's book that has varying parts of people, varying parts of faces, and you were able to flip each one of those panels individually so you could have a cowboy's hat and eyes, you could have a woman's nose, and then you could have an old lady's uh, lips below. What if we did something like that? And then I shifted the design a little bit. Correcting my boxes before I get the warning signs because I know that's exactly what that orange means. It's an idea. Probably not one I'm going to stick with, but it is important to know that there are a lot of layout choices you have. You're not stuck to single images or double page spreads. If you need to dump something, if you need to trash it, click on the box, find the trash can, hit that. If you need to get rid of the entire uh, container, trash can that. I think ultimately my solution for this is to have two small versions of the blur, like so, and one large version of the blur, which is a little bit different. And of my choices, I think that one's pretty cool. That one's okay, but she's off-centered, and that one's quite similar to the other one. I think those two and this one uh, support each other very well. Don't need the text boxes, put them in the trash can. Now, having looked at this setup and seeing what I've got going on with the other pages, I'm noticing that this sequence of photos is not quite as shadowy as uh, suits the concept. It's still strange in the way that images like this are a little off-putting and strange, but uh, looking at this particular model with her outfit and her tattoos, I'm realizing I do have an image that suits the overall theme of the book a little bit better, and what I'm getting out of this particular picture isn't as different as uh, these other ones that I've included. So this particular image where she's just smoking a cigarette, uh, I think really fits the aesthetic of this material, but it adds to it. And because this model is so distinctive with her tattoos on her chest, um, I'm fine with the blurry images next to the one with the smoke. I think that ultimately they support each other because there is something common. It's the same person. I know they were shot at the same time under the same circumstances, uh, just two slightly different concepts, one involving smoke and the other involving blurs but the curling of the smoke also suits this sort of wild blurring that she's doing. She's just the thing in motion in this picture, and the smoke is the element that's in motion in this photograph. Now, the sequence of the pages, uh, as I've been designing them here, isn't something that really matters at this stage. I'm just trying to populate the pages I have 
because ultimately I'm going to go into manage pages and I'm going to see the flow of everything here and I'm going to be able to pick up and reposition things uh, in a way that I could do on the sidebar, but it's just easier to see the full project within this manage pages window. So I'm not going to worry about the sequence right now. I'm going to wait till I get all my images here and then see how it flows. Uh, a lot of times with photographic books, the flow might be how emotional things are, uh, how they make you feel.
helps the picture uh, maintain its integrity. So I did that to all my widescreen photos, uh, these eyes, this girl and the wave, so on and so forth. Now, looking at my layout, uh, I wanna have a couple pages that are both uh, a model on one side and a model on the other, rather than having the double page spread or something that's kind of a different part of the design where I have like the two small images. So I'm gonna kick this back and I like it for visual variety. Uh, I'm just going to shift them around so they're spaced fairly evenly throughout the book. With this set of pages, I ended up doing two of the same model because I really liked both of these images. I felt like her poses were interesting in both of them. I also um, reused the model who had the bloody makeup over here, and I felt like it was overkill to have so many of those images spread throughout. I just went ahead and picked the most emotional, resonant image here. Uh, she doesn't have her knife prop that she had in the image that I originally had sequenced, but I felt like this one, as much as I like it as an image, um, it's very actressy, and this one is a little more harsh and immediate, and I felt like that was the better choice out of all the choices I had. Uh, this particular sequence, what holds them together is the shadows of the hands. Now in placement, I think that this one should go over here. So back to manage pages, pick this one up, move it over. And I think it registers as a little better design. These images are similar in the shadows that crisscross the model's faces, but I also feel like they're um, not as hard hitting as some of the other ones I have. And so I'm gonna move that closer to the front and keep the ones that have a little more uh, weirdness, the more surreal elements towards the back because I think that's the sequence of the book. Uh, swap this one for this one. Make sure there's some double page spreads that build up in the back. So we've got one double page spread. We want that at least three in. I think this sequence is looking a lot sharper. Got some real disturbing ones in a row here. Go ahead and move this double page spread down in between these singles. So we have single image, single images, double page spread, single images, uh, unusual layout, single images, single images, double page spread, single images, unusual layout, single images, double page, single images, double page, single images, unusual layout, double page, and then we wrap. The only other complaint I might have is that my wrap up is uh, two of the same model, one that has a very almost bloody look to it, even though I know that's just a projection of some random colors, and then the birthday cake. But uh, one thing I really like about the birthday cake as the final image is that it's rewarding the viewer. Both of these are looking directly at the viewer and they're, they're congratulating you on uh, making it through a harsh zine. So fairly happy with this particular layout. One more look through it. Got to make sure that on my back cover, I place the information that I want, which is just going to be who I am and what this is about and where they can find more of me. Uh, I add the same information on the back of all of my trade books. And that is basically my website, my social media. Same font, nice and large go through the final steps. We've got fix your book warnings. Very important to do all of this because once you place an order, uh, you want to make sure that you're spending money on things that aren't broken. Okay, no more warnings. Book info. Got that taken care of. We're going to preview the whole thing. Bookwrite allows you to export a PDF proof. This is going to have a 
few bits of uh, watermarking on it and it's also going to be small enough PDF that you're not going to be able to print it. So don't get the idea that you're able to uh, simply kick off a PDF out of Bookrite and print it yourself. Now this process of previewing your book is something that uh, you have to do, there's no way around it, and you're probably gonna find a lot of mistakes in the process. One of the most common mistakes I find is that I forgot to spread a photo out all the way across in the way that I want it to be. Or I find that some of this stuff is uh, a little less exciting <laughs> when viewed this way than when I uh, took them individually. When I, for example, this particular image, uh, even though I like it as a picture of that model, compared to this girl with a little more unique makeup and the skull, uh, this image just isn't cutting it for me. So that's probably gonna get the ax, get replaced with something else. If you've never edited a book, uh, if you're not confident in your ability to judge the works that you make, it really is helpful to get an extra pair of eyes, get a friend involved, somebody whose opinion uh, you value. Certainly not worth it to just throw the whole project up on social media and ask random people what they think because their opinions uh, have no context. When you are choosing critic, make sure you're choosing a well-informed critic who's gonna help you out. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that picture. Find something that sequentially will match the girl in the skull. You know, this particular image was shot in the same day and the same time. And I'm a big fan of that one. However, it's just too pretty uh, for this particular sequence. This one is nice and shadowy. It actually is very similar to the cover. And at this point, uh, it's kind of up to you if you feel like you should utilize your cover image within your book. When I'm reviewing this cover, I'm realizing that this one actually is covered in writing and it would be beneficial to have a clean version of that in the book. So I'm going to put that in there, swap the pages, see if that achieves what I'm looking for. Um, I do like this image as a match. The only issue is that they're both facing the same direction. And if you're not too precious about your photos, you probably could use Photoshop and flip that one around so it's facing this direction. But I am one of those people who's very precious about their photos and they don't feel like altering it just for the sake of this book. So I'm gonna back up, leave that one, see if I have any other options that are suitable. And I think I have a solution. Another option is to take this page, swap this one with this one. It's not the same model, but there's a uh, certain similarity to their physicality that I'm thinking works. Also the idea that uh, this one is silhouetted in this one, you can make out quite a bit of her. They're looking at each other. I think that works as a pair. We go back to these two. This one is just simply too pretty. I think my next edition of Noir will focus on uh, very pretty pictures, less messy and scary. So I'm gonna ax that one for now. This one is quite messy and scary. Doesn't really match this particular image. This one I feel like is a little weaker. It isn't as punchy as a lot of the other choices we have. This one is of the very same model. Uh, but with a lot more shadow to it. I think that's a suitable replacement. And then within managing pages, because this one has the rain element and this one has the water element, I'm going to position it so rain leads into water. I think I have a sequence that I'm a lot happier with. Everything seems to uh, add up. It features a lot of the same models. So we have a model named Mackenzie here, here, and here. We have a model named Alina here, here. We have Cheyenne here, 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 here. 
We have Clementine here, here, another of Cheyenne, that's Clementine. Uh, quite a few similar faces throughout. I think it holds together as a work. I'm going to go ahead and upload it, order my copies, 